what we're going to do for this technique is we are going to use a brush called the insert sphere. We're going to insert a sphere into our object, in this case, the sphere. And then what's going to happen is that our first sphere is going to be masked allowing us to modify the inserted sphere. Once we are done editing the second sphere that we added, we will get rid of the mask by holding control and dragging on the canvas. And then because we are going to dynamesh the first sphere, we have to hold control and drag on the canvas again to re dynamesh the two pieces together. All right, next I'm going to show you how to insert a polysphere, but then switching your mask so that you can modify the original object. So let's go back to our insert polysphere. I'm going to insert this object right here. So again, if I insert the sphere on the edges, I'm going to get two spheres because I'm using my active symmetry. And then as soon as I let go, notice that the original object has been masked. So what if I start moving this newly created spheres with my move brush? Remember, it's not the move tool, the move tool is our transpose tool and I'll show you guys how to use that in a second. But let's say that I'm done with this, but I notice that the back piece of this character is not where I want it to be. So in order to switch your mask from this object to this object, all you have to do is hold control. And instead of clearing the mask by dragging, you're going to click on the canvas and that's how you switch your mask. So now my mask has been added to the newly created spheres. I'm going to use the same move tool and I'm going to modify this object right here. And once I'm happy with it, I'm going to smooth this part right here. I'm going to make this one rounder. And let's say, for example, I'm happy with this object. Again, we have to first clear the mask by holding control and dragging. And then we want to re-dynamesh these newly created shapes with the original one. So I'm going to hold control drag. And as you can see, now there are two spheres that we created are part of the original shape. I can hold shift and smooth everything. And then notice how they blend in where they were connecting before as two different objects. I'm going to hit F so I can frame my object, move it around and snap it on the view that I want. So next, what we're going to do, we're going to use our insert sphere. But instead of fusing these newly created shapes with this original shape, what we're going to do is we're going to separate them so that we can create a separate sub tool. So again, I'm going to start with my insert sphere. I'm going to do a click on the side of this object right here. So let me select my insert sphere. I'm going to go right here. And as soon as I let go again, we will mask the original shape which allows us to edit this object. And now instead of using the move brush, I'm going to use the move tool, our infamous transpose tool. So I'm going to click on W or just select this icon right here. And remember, we have an entire video on how the transpose tool works. I'm going to zoom in this white circle. If I click on it, it's going to put it in the middle of the sphere, but it's already there. So we don't have to worry about this. These lines right here are the axes of this tool. So if I click on the blue, the transpose line will align with the blue axis. The blue axis is the Z. Let me move this over here. If I click on the green, which is the Y axis, the transpose line, which now is aligning itself to the blue will align to the green. And if I click on the red, it will align to the red because I want to use this as a move tool. I'm going to put it on the Z direction to make the transpose line bigger. You drag on the outside of the orange ring that is closest to the white ring like this. And if you move it, you will notice that you will unsnap it from that axis. So I'm going to move mine over here. And now when I click on the inside of the orange ring that is nearest to the white ring, again, on the inside, I will get this circle. So I'm going to drag. And when I'm dragging, what I'm doing is I'm moving the shape from the center. Again, that is the pivot point of the tool of the transpose tool. So for example, if I select rotate, we will rotate from the center of this ring right here. 
and to rotate you go to the outer ring again to the inside of the outer ring and notice that now we can rotate this object as soon as I let go the tool does not stay with the rotation it goes back to its original shape and again all of these things that I'm showing you right now about the transpose tool are in our transpose video and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a click and a drag really fast like this and as soon as I do that I'm determining where the pivot point for this transpose tool is so if I want to rotate let's say from this point right here I'm going to do a click and drag and now I can rotate from that point if I want to move most of the mass from this point down, I will leave it there, move my transpose line, and then I'm going to select to move, and I will move the shape like so. In this case, I want to make something that looks like the legs of an insect. I'm going to rotate to my side. Immediately, I'm going to hold shift so I can snap to the side view. And now I want to bring this shape. I'm going to move it not scale it, but push the mass from the right hand side to the left hand side. So I'm going to move my transpose tool by doing a click and drag like this. I can hold shift and then notice that when you hold shift, it snaps to these views right here. And now when I move, make sure that you're in the move and I push this in, I'm actually moving the mass. All right, to get rid of the transpose tool, you select draw or hit the letter Q and I like what I have, but I don't want to fuse it with the rest of the body yet. Let's say that I want to do that later on. So in order to separate these newly created objects from the original shape, first we have to clear the mask, control drag on your canvas, and notice that they are two pieces. They're not fused yet because I did not redynamesh this object. So I'm going to go in my subtool palette, I'm going to go to split, and I'm going to click to split to parts. It's going to tell me that this is an undoable operation. I'm going to hit OK. And now what I have are these individual pieces, this one right here, and then this one right here. And if I was to do a redynamesh, which is control drag on the canvas, nothing is going to happen because, again, I'm in this subtool right here. You can tell because I have this gray bar at the very bottom. And these guys now are on their own separate subtools. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to merge all these down. So I'm going to go to merge and I'm going to do a merge down. There's no merge up. And now that I've merged this original shape, which is Dynamesh, with these two shapes that are not Dynamesh, if I do a control drag, I will re-Dynamesh all three pieces together, as you can see right here. And I can hit smooth and notice that they are part of the original piece. I'm going to hit F so I can frame the whole thing. I'm going to move back and then I'm going to rotate and then I'm going to hold shift. And this is how you use the insert sphere tool on a Dynamesh object to create new shapes. In traditional sculpting, we would call this blocking. And now that we're done blocking the major shapes, we can start our sculpting. 